With hungry colonies at the end of winter, and also with brand new nukes or packages, it's important to feed sugar syrup. Feeding will get the bees to create more wax comb, and also sugar syrup is available to the bees on cold days, rainy days, and the occasional day when it's even snowing in the spring. One option is a kind of feeder that fits into your entrance. This is good if you live in a warm climate where the bees will be circulating inside the hive all the time. In a cold climate, when the bees might be clustered at the same time that they need the syrup, you could put this kind of feeder inside the hive above the inner cover hole. If you like, you can use many of these. Here we can feed three gallons at once with six feeders. Put on a medium or deep box, whichever is the right height to cover these feeders, and put your outer cover on. These are the Bee Smart feeders. These also go on top of the inner cover and are hidden by a box and the outer cover. This is the ultimate feeder. It has a little spring inside, and when the tank is put down on top of the blue base, the spring is pushed in and the syrup will be released for bees to lick the drops out. Bees crawl in over the edge here. This is the three season feeder. There are no moving parts on it. Just set it down on the inner cover with the center area down inside the hole and the bees will lick the little drops of sugar that come out of the holes. With any of these types of feeders that you fill and then flip over, it's important to fill them as much as you can. When you flip them, a little bit of syrup will come out. Not much though. This kind is called a division board feeder or a frame feeder, and you can get it for a deep box or a medium box. It takes the place of two frames in your brood box. It comes with either a kind of ladder that you install or these two clips, which you should save for optional use later. If you're using the ladders, orient them so that the words are facing up. Fold the ladder parts downwards and slide the apparatus into the feeder and click down all six of the clips. This is important so bees don't get into the reservoir. They will drown in the syrup if they're in the large area in the middle. Pour the syrup in at either end and that's also where the bees climb down in to access the syrup. If you use any very thick syrup, such as three parts sugar to one part water, it won't pass easily through this ladder mesh as you pour it in. In that case, put the two clips on after removing the ladders and put in a float stick. If you're using a medium, two float sticks will lay side by side. The stick will go up when you fill the feeder with syrup. It will go down as the bees drink the syrup. They'll just walk on the stick and cling to the sides inside. Make sure the feeder is placed close to the cluster when you put it in the hive. With frame feeders, it's best to put the feeder in first and then fill it. Springtime, nectar collection, and syrup feeding all contribute to wax building. That's why it's important to have your inner cover facing the right way, the thin side down. The notch shows you which side is the thicker side. Put the notch up and the thin side will be down. This will help you to avoid your bees building a lot of crazy comb on the top of the frames under your inner cover. This type of feeder is a hive top feeder. There's many types, but they all have the same concept. A large reservoir where the syrup goes and access by the bees below. They come up from below and access the syrup. This is a cutaway view. This is where the syrup is. It can go through this plastic wall. Bees come in from underneath. They can climb up this dark wall, go over the top, and access the feeder safely in that thin area. They do not go inside where the reservoir of syrup is. On this one, there's another interesting feature. If you want to pop out these two circular cutouts, 
discard the little circle and put in the rubber plug, you can use it for syrup. But later, if you want to use it for pollen patties or maybe winter patties or sugar for an emergency winter feed, just take out the two rubber plugs and put your solid food in the feeder. This means you don't need to have a shim or a super or any other thing to give height for your solid feed. Put the outer cover securely on the top. Here's another type of hive top feeder. This is the wall that protects the bees from getting into the reservoir where you put the syrup. Again, they access the syrup from underneath as this feeder sits on the brood chamber. They crawl up into these slots and they go up over the wall onto the safe side of the wall and they lick up the syrup that has oozed under that plastic wall. Syrup is in here. This is another hive top feeder, the Lysen feeder. It has the same sort of idea, the wall that keeps the bees from getting into the reservoir, the slot where they access the feeder from below, from their brood chamber. This one's just a little different though. It comes with a float stick, and this is how you put the float stick in. Put the feeder upside down, drop the float stick in the slot, and shake and roll the feeder over, and the float stick will end up behind that wall right where the bees will be crawling down to access the syrup that comes through the wall. I'm going to show you how we put on one of these hive top feeders with a large rectangular reservoir. It's springtime here and the inner cover is in its wintertime position with the notch down. That gives the bees easy exit from their brood chamber if they need to have a cleansing flight during the winter. We're going to take that inner cover right off because you don't use that with hive top feeders of this style. Give them a little smoke so that they don't all come rushing out when I pop their cover off. There's a lot of bees clinging to this inner cover, so I'm just going to shake them into their brood chamber. Set that aside. We're not going to use it. If we used it, bees from the outside would be able to access that large reservoir in the feeder, and we don't want that. They'll drown. This feeder holds a few gallons, so it's best to put it on while it's empty. Here's the little plastic wall. Make sure that's down snugly. Oh, it looks like there's a lot of bees on here, so I'm gonna smoke them down before placing the feeder. Get them to retreat downwards. All right. Put the feeder on. I have one to one syrup already. That's half sugar and half syrup. That's what we'll feed in the spring. It's pretty close to the composition of nectar and it's not too thick. It's easy for them to take down and it really stimulates wax building. It's good for getting foundation drawn out and comb created. Put the cover on snugly. Again, I can't emphasize this too much. Don't put the inner cover on. We're just going to keep that off, put it away in the garage or something. Oops, this is a little offset. Now it's nicely lined up. One thing you don't want to start when you're trying to help your bees by feeding is to start a robbing frenzy by having badly fitting equipment. The last kind of feeder we're going to show you are bucket feeders. If your feeder pail has a tear off strip around the lid, be sure to tear it off since this will make it easier to get the lid off again after your first use. Some buckets lids don't have a tear off ring, but you should cut the slots that go around the edge of the lid. We're going to put our bucket on top of the inner cover and so I want to scrape off this wax so that the feeder will sit flat and uh, in order to scrape the wax off I'm going to tap these bees down into their brood chamber. All right. A little bit more scraping here.
much it falls out. Here I go. And the idea is the same. Fill it up as much as you can. Put the cover on very tightly and flip it over. And a little syrup will come out and the bees can access it. It forms a vacuum as they lick away at the drops that are coming through the holes. The good thing about bucket feeders or putting your entrance feeder up and inside is that the bees can access their syrup at night when it's cold and they wouldn't be flying out to get nectar anyways. And on the cold days that you know you're always going to get in the springtime. 